Oh, here. Need a hand with that? <laughs> Sorry for sneaking up on you. Um, I finished cleaning upstairs, and Captain Levi instructed me to help you out if you needed it. And by the looks of it, no offense, but you seem to need my help. Oh, no, don't worry, it's not a bad thing. You know, you're actually a lot better at cleaning than some of the other recruits. Yes, Aaron included. Especially Aaron. <laughs> Your work is definitely adequate by my standards, but uh, there are certainly a few things that I can see Levi getting mad over. Here, let me show you. Alright, you see this window here? When you were cleaning it, it streaked. Um. There's actually a pretty easy way to avoid that. First, don't ever zigzag your lines when you're washing, alright? Go up and down like this, in a straight line each time. See? And as for the streaking that will inevitably show up at first, if you dry it, in the same way, just like this, then in a few moments, there! Streaking's gone. Well, for now, anyway. This castle is pretty old, so I expect there will be a lot of dust floating around. Nothing here will stay clean for long. Well. At least not until everyone's settled. Then maybe, since everything will be in the air, it won't have time to settle anywhere. <laughs> well, I've been in the scouts for a while now, so you'll learn a thing or two when you're constantly berated for not keeping things clean enough for the captain's standards. Oh, I'm Petra, by the way. Petra Rall. It's really nice to meet you. I understand you're a member of the 104th. Am I correct? <laughs> You've been through a lot, then. Or at least I would assume so given what happened in Trost. I must say, I'm definitely impressed with how well you all worked together and saved the city. And I'm certainly impressed that you were able to survive. I mean, most people would be terrified and completely frozen with fear. But you managed to survive. That's incredible. And it's even more incredible when you consider that you didn't have any direction from any of the higher-ups. You were pretty much on your own. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? <laughs> we should get back to work, but if you'd like, we can still talk. Although, I would recommend listening for footsteps. That would probably mean that the captain is approaching, and if he catches us talking, he'll immediately assume we're slacking off, and then we'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, he can be pretty intimidating, despite his short stature, but once you get used to it, well, it's not so intimidating. Well, it's more so 
not intimidating because you know what he's expecting, so you know what to do so that you don't get in trouble. Oh, if you think this is rough, try being on his squad. Yeah, it really doesn't help that, well, at least for me, that I'm the only girl on his squad. So, I kind of have to work extra hard since most people assume that every girl in the Survey Corps is either going to be weak or they're going to be absolutely insane like Hanji is. No offense to her. I, I love her dearly. She is great at what she does, but her methods are definitely more on the eccentric side of things. <laughs> Thanks. I, I look forward to working with you, too. Uh, careful. Um, sometimes there will be spiders in the cupboards and you can't see them because usually spiders are very dark in color and in the very back corners it gets really dark, so be mindful of where you put your hands. We don't need you getting bitten. Especially considering Hanji is our only doctor of sorts around here. And believe me, if you think that she's crazy about her titans, well, her test subjects, or her babies as she calls them, well, you haven't even begun to see her crazy side. See, she views the Survey Corps, yes, her Titan test subjects included, as her family. So if one of us gets hurt, she'll immediately go into a mother mode of sorts. And from personal experience, I'd rather deal with a crazy Hanji than a worried Hanji. <sighs> you know, I don't usually get along too well with the new recruits. I don't know why. But for some reason, I don't know, I just, I feel comfortable opening up to you about some things. Or even just making idle chit chat. It's strange. Not that it's unwelcome, I, I like having someone else to talk to. I mean, the captain really isn't one for conversation and the other members of the Levi squad, they can get a bit out of hand at times. And of course, then there's Hanji, who only ever really wants to talk about her experiments. And Commander Irwin usually just sticks with Mike. So, there aren't a whole lot of people to talk to. Yeah, I suppose it can get a little lonely. And then if you need to vent about anything, well, either you're going to have to somehow turn that anger into sadness and cry yourself to sleep, or go out into the forest and scream until your lungs forget what oxygen feels like. Yeah, it's 
not the best for your health. But it's better than bottling your emotions up. Although, and forgive me if I'm assuming that you're enjoying this conversation. Um, if you ever need anyone to talk to, then just let me know. I understand how rough it can be, and maybe, depending on what you're going through, I might have been through it as well. So I might know a few tips and tricks to help you feel better. I know that this is definitely overwhelming, especially after what happened in Trost. And I know it's really never going to feel normal. I mean, whenever we go on expeditions now, I'm not as afraid as I used to be, but I'm still not entirely confident. I know that it's not easy to adjust to this life, but I'm here for you if you ever need someone to lean on. Or even if you don't have anything to say, you don't know what's going on, just follow my lead, okay? I usually know how things work around here, so I'll always be here for you. No matter how petrified you are out on the field, I'll make sure you're okay. I'd do the same for anyone, but since you're you're a very nice person. I feel like I owe it to you, in a way. Do you ever feel that way about someone? Where they're just such a, such a pleasant person to be around, and they're so nice to others that you feel like you owe it to them to reciprocate their kindness for the sake of everyone else they've been nice to. <laughs> I suppose it is a little odd, but that's kind of how I feel about you. So far, anyway. I hope that doesn't change. Or if it does, I just hope it leads to a friendship. Or at least a pleasant co-worker of sorts relationship. <laughs> oh, um, by the way, I noticed when you arrived that you had a few books with you. I'm not sure if they're books or notebooks that you like to write in, or maybe even sketchbooks because you like drawing, but if you ever need a peaceful place, there's a small grove of trees out back. I'm sure you'd like it there. It's very relaxing, and there is enough light to read by. Or write by, or draw by. <laughs> and, of course, even though it will be closed at night just for the sake of privacy, Figuratively speaking, my door is always open to you. So, feel free to stop by if you ever need anything. I'll be ready. Okay, that, that sounded weird, but what I meant is that I'll be prepared to help. That sounds better. I'll be prepared to help you, or to comfort you, or even just talk like we're talking now. <laughs> oh, 
And what do you know? We're done. All right. Let's go get the captain. He needs to inspect our work before we're allowed to leave. And then maybe you and I can go out to the grove of trees. It's a good way to relax. Come on. Let's go.